welcome back. And in the previous video, we showed you how easy it was to use the EM to ice pack wizard in order to perform an electrothermal management and ETM analysis of the twisted waveguide filter that we created in the AETT Getting Started Guide. Easy and simple. That's because the ACT extension was already installed and the electrical model was set as needed for a thermal simulation. So now for the details. And in this video, we're going to show you how to download and install the EM to Ice Pack ACT extension. Download and install it to the AEDT interface and provide some more information on the default options inside that wizard. The EM to Ice Pack extension is not a default installed ACT extension, so we're going to need to download and install it. So what are these ACT extensions? Well, it's an ANSYS application developed to tailor the ANSYS product or the ANSYS simulation workflow to your specific need here for ETM. Any ANSYS user can create an app to customize and automate our simulation tools or our workflows. And the M2 Ice Pack Wizard automates the basic steps that are necessary for every ETM analysis. In short, it extends the use of the ANSYS HFSS and Ice Pack as standalone point tools with its native features and functionalities to an integrated coupled multi-physics application where data is exchanged and used between the two point tools, creating a more automated workflow. And all ANSYS customers, commercial and non-commercial, our partners, our ANSYS team members, they can create an ANSYS app and publish it on the ANSYS store. The app users, they can either download it the application for free or pay an annual subscription fee as determined solely and only by the app creator. And the ANSYS App Store is accessible to all who have a paid license. So that tells you what is the, an ACT extension. So now the question is, where do you download the ANSYS ACT extension? And the answer is the ANSYS App Store. The easiest way to get there is when you have the AEDT user interface open, click on view, on the view tab, select ACT extension, and the ACT homepage appears. Click on the ANSYS store option on the bottom, and that redirects you to the site in your browser. And you can either use the search option provided by using the drop down menu or select the extension for narrowing down the options. And in the drop down menu for target applications, select electronics desktop, and that'll show you the available ACT extensions for AEDT. Browse, go ahead and select the required extension. A new page appears, click on download. Read it, acknowledge it, and the extension archive file is downloaded in zip format. And once the file is downloaded, go back to the AEDT interface in the ACT extension window, click on that plus sign in the top right center. Browse to your file location where you extracted the zip folder contents and select the .wbex file as shown. And finish the installation. After the sexual installation, go ahead and access the ACT extension in the wizard. Now you'll be able to see the EM to Ice Pack extension icon in that view wizard option. Continue now, we can continue smoothly on with an electrothermal management workflow. Do note, sometimes you may have to close the AEDT application and relaunch it in order for AET to enable the newly installed X extension. And once you have EM to Ice Pack opened, the dialog box appears and select one from the drop down menu for the number of EM designs as we currently only have one design. And if you have multiple HFSS designs that you want to perform an ETM analysis, go ahead and select it accordingly. You'll also notice that the project name, HFSS design name, and the solution setup are automatically selected from within the open project. And in the simulation type, you can select forced or normal convection and we'll simulate a temperature controlled indoor lab environment. So go ahead and select forced convection, enter one for the flow in units of meters per second, set the flow in the positive X direction, keep the default value for the ambient temperature and that's in Celsius degrees and select the mesh resolution somewhere in between medium and fine from that drop down. 
And now you can always reselect the mesh settings after the wizard has completed and you're inside the ice pack design. Under mesh solve, all three options from the drop down menu will create the setup as required for the ice pack simulation analysis. Clicking mesh and solve will generate the mesh and proceed to solve the model. Selecting no will generate the ice pack model. Select no for this video. And we are initially detailing the one-way coupling, coupling between HFSS electromagnetic simulation results into the ice pack fluid simulation solve setup. In the two-way coupled section, select no to force this one-way coupling. Select on launch and watch all the additional AEDT windows pop up. They're created and they're open from that one single HFSS design as it inserts that new ice pack design using that model geometry from HFSS, including the required ice pack setup as generated from the wizard, your selections, the act extension page. Use that control D in that 3D modeler window to fit that whole model. And in that project manager window, go ahead and select the ice pack design. Right mouse click, select that solution type Confirm its steady state is selected and that the temperature and flow is also selected under the problem type. Go ahead and expand that ice pack design under the thermal category. Double click on inlet and outlet so you can see how they're defined. Notice the metal walls are already assigned as surface and the waveguide cavity under the volume loss. Nothing for you to do. The EM to Ice Pack Wizard created optional temperature and velocity monitors as well. And these values you can check during the analysis for convergence. Right mouse click on that mesh category. Go ahead and select generate mesh. And once that mesh is generated, go ahead and view the mesh. And note that HFSS and Ice Pack have different mesh types. And that's because of the specific business algorithm underneath it. And you can also select the required object from the model tree window and click on geometry, boundary, and view that mesh. Close the mesh view window, expand the analysis category, double click on setup one to view or edit the solution setup. Go ahead, notice the options selected for the analysis. And currently the radiation model is turned off. You can select discrete coordinates and click on the checkbox to include gravity. And you can also view the convergence, the solver settings, and the radiation tabs. And now that you're satisfied with the analysis setup, go ahead and start the ice pack analysis. Right mouse click on setup one and select analyze. And during or at the end of the analysis, right mouse click on setup one and select residual. Go ahead and look at the convergence to confirm that there were enough passes to reach a steady state temperature, a steady state response. And if you're not, and you need to add more passes, or review your convergence criteria. And you can also view the temperature and the flow monitors that were set. And after the solution is completed, go to the profile and browse through the profile to find the term mapped EM losses. And this value should be in line with the value that we calculated with the HFSS field calculator in that previous video. Now, let's view the temperature plot. Select both waveguide underscore outer and waveguide underscore inner. Right mouse click, select plot fields, temperature, and then select temperature again. In the create field plot dialog box, keep the default selections under the quantity and in the volume. Go ahead, select the plot on surface only, click done. And now you'll see the thermal profile of the waveguide metal. And the temperature here is highest near the twist as the electrical losses are greater here. This is where the currents are confined, near the twist. And if the temperature exceeds a specific threshold, the twist can be reduced in order to limit the amount of current that that's collecting in the twist or elongated. And in this model, we used five watts of power into the waveguide just to show some temperature increase. Go ahead and adjust the input power according to your use. Okay, let's go view the airflow. And in the model history tree window, expand the planes category and select the XY plane of the relative coordinate system one. Right click on the 3D modeler window and select plot. Plot fields, select the velocity and select velocity vectors. Retain all the faults in that dialog box. Click done to, 
And there you go, the display of the vector velocity field plot. And you can also use this to verify the energy balance using the field summary report. And the map losses is the only source of heat for this model. And for a well-converged solution, the heat that's dissipated from the system should be very close to the heat that's generated in the system. Go ahead, click on results tab, click on the field summary option in the ribbon. Make sure the check under entity boundary is selected and also under geometry type, the surface is selected. Select the adjacent side checkbox. Select both inlet and outlet in the entity under quantity. Select heat flow rate. Click add drop down the button. Select add as a single calculation. And this is the total heat that's transferred from the twisted waveguide. Note that this does match the surface losses that were computed in the HFSS field calculator and the surface losses that are applied in the profile monitor. So in this video, we detailed a little bit more on how to install that ANSYS ACT extension, specifically that EM to ICE pack extension, and more detail on how the solve is set up in this specific extension. And this automates the electrothermal management workflow. In our next video, we're gonna show you how to use this same one-way coupling between HFSS and IcePack in a step-by-step -step fashion. Thank you for watching this video on ETM using the EM to IcePack Act extension. And for more videos on HFSS or IcePack or any of the ANSYS simulation tools, please visit courses.ansys.com today.